Have you ever seen someone doing one of these while they talk on their speakerphone? Well, here's the funny thing. The mic for the speakerphone is up here on the top end. So really they should be going like this, not like that. This phone has no speakerphone mic capability. So up here at the top, we should have sound coming in when we make a call, but nobody on the other end can hear us. So we're going to replace the earpiece speaker, which is attached to the microphone that goes right up here to the top of the phone. And one interesting thing about this is that it is listed as a speaker, mic, and proximity sensor, but I do not see anything that resembles a proximity sensor. There's something here on the back, but uh, it does not look like a proximity sensor. So uh, we'll find out once we get inside the phone. But one thing to keep in mind is that when you order parts, people who sell these parts do not necessarily work on phones. There can be confusion as far as what you're actually getting. So you want to make sure you're getting the right part for your repair. When it comes to this rear panel on the Galaxy S6, you have a few choices. Kind of depends on how your repair goes. Getting this off without damaging any of the paint underneath the panel can be challenging so if you end up damaging this you can replace the entire panel uh, one of the reasons this is so hard to get off is because you have adhesive that goes all the way around and trying to salvage this adhesive and use it again can be tricky also because it's just kind of all over the place and it has these odd little pieces that stick out you can replace the adhesive alone if you want to, you can uh, get the glass off, take off the old adhesive and replace just that. If you end up damaging the panel, this is also easy to replace and it's nice when you buy them and they have the pre-installed adhesive. So you might want to pick the, one of these up just in case they're relatively inexpensive. But if not, we're going to try to get this off this time without doing any damage to the adhesive or the glass and we'll see how that goes. One thing that will help you is to apply heat while you're working with this. I've got a heat gun here. I want to get the surface temperature up to where it's very warm to the touch, but not hot enough to burn me. I usually aim for about 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit because any phone can withstand that temperature on a hot day without causing any damage to the phone, but it does make the adhesive easier to remove. Also, before you get started, I recommend that you take the SIM card out right now. We are going to have to separate the display from the mid-frame and the SIM card goes right through those two, so make sure you take that out, set it aside, and then we'll start by applying some heat to the rear panel. And I'm also going to begin prying very carefully with a razor blade because that is the thinnest object that I typically work with that will get between the glass and the adhesive or between the adhesive and the mid-frame. The main thing is you don't want to go underneath the paint that's on the inside of the panel. So what I did is I started here with the razor blade, just kind of straight in. You want to get under the glass, but you want to be really careful not to scar it. So this is a dulled razor blade, and as soon as I can kind of get in here, and I ended up going in with the corner just a little bit, which I really hate to do. What you don't want to do is run a piece of metal up and down the edge of glass or metal because it tends to leave a lot of marks. So as soon as you get this to lift up a little ways, you want to switch over to a softer tool. Again, you'll see that I keep hitting it with the heat just to keep it nice and warm. It makes the adhesive much easier to work with. All right, so we'll just switch over to a very thin guitar pick. I believe this is about a 0.43 millimeter. I'll have to check on that and continue heating and then you can just kind of work your way around the perimeter you don't need to go in very far there's just a thin layer of adhesive that goes around the edges here so i'm going to speed up the camera here just in a second but uh, you can kind of get an idea that i'm working at a very slow pace here just very carefully and i actually went around the perimeter a couple times because it tends to stick down a little bit as you're working with it so just go in here i mean maybe an eighth of an inch or so you don't have to go in very far and just use some patience keep keep it hot you don't want to lift up on this and put a lot of tension on the back because you can crack it and again with something like a plastic guitar pick you don't have to worry about scratching up the phone and then as we get around here you'll see that it starts to lift up so again apply some heat there is adhesive around the center part of this also 
but it's not going to give you much resistance. So as long as you get under here and just kind of lift on this very carefully, you should be able to separate it without too much effort. Again, the heat is the key. Right, so you can see that most of this adhesive is still intact, but again, we're going to have to remove it in order to get to the screws. And a very common question that people ask me is, will my phone still be as waterproof or as water resistant as it was after I take this adhesive off? And the answer is no. Phones are a little bit like cars. The moment you drive them off the lot, they're never going to be brand new again. And the moment you crack your screen, it's definitely not going to be as resistant to moisture as it was before. So no. But if you use a good adhesive, and we'll probably have some pre-cut adhesive available here in the near future, you can get it pretty close to factory specs. Uh, but you can see this is cut out to fit in a very specific layout on the back of the phone. So it's really hard to get a hold of something like that unless it's already pre-cut. So hopefully somebody will come up with an aftermarket version we can use. And we have 13 screws on the back that we need to remove from the panel. These are all the same size, so it does not matter if you put them in one pile, they are interchangeable. And sometimes they don't like to come out, so you might have to reach inside and grab them, either with your fingernails or a pair of tweezers. This type works well enough. And that last one does not want to come out. So I'm going to leave this here and keep track of it because as we separate the display from the frame, it's probably going to pop out, so we don't want to lose that one. You may find it helpful to peel back the NFC flex cable. This piece here. And then you can see the battery is just against the back of the display. And this will, at some point, lift out just like that. Okay, so as you push it out from the bottom, it's going to slide out of the top, and there we have the mid-frame, or the uh, bezel, separated from the phone, and I will be replacing this later on because it's sort of beat up. And when you do buy these, they come with all the internals for the most part. You probably have to transfer the speaker and a few other pieces, so we'll set this aside for now. And what we're looking at is the speaker up here at the top, which sits just like that. Once you get to this point, we want to disconnect the battery so there's no power flowing through the phone while we work with it. And of course, we also want to disconnect our old part. Now this is gonna wrap around the top sort of like this, and just peel back, and there you have your speaker and microphone. So to replace these, all we need to do is grab the new one and make sure that we remove anything like this. We've got some sort of adhesive sticker for the front, and that's going to set just like that. What we want to make sure of is that this little gold box that's on the opposite side sits inside of this plastic guide here, rubberized material. So I might, in fact, need to remove the board, but we're going to try to do it just like this. If we bend it this way, we should be okay. After pre-bending the flex cable so that it looked like the original, I found it easiest to put the mic into position first, then the earpiece speaker, at that point, you can plug it in. Just be sure to check that the cable is sitting flush against the top end of the phone. That way nothing gets snagged when you put it back together.
do remember to plug the battery back in before you reinstall the bezel. Yeah, I don't know why they said this is a proximity sensor. It's absolutely not a proximity sensor. The proximity sensor is going to be over on this area, uh, basically underneath this part of the logic board, so you won't be able to see it at the moment. From here, we can reinstall the frame. If you start at the top end, you'll find that as you work towards the bottom that it doesn't easily slide into place all the time. Don't worry about everything being straight just yet. If you tuck in the left hand side of the screen at this point, it should then become easier to line up the remaining edges. Before you put the back panel on, do be sure to make a test call so that you know that everything is working properly. Main menu. Say refill, manage plans and packages, account balance, or more options. Account balance. Sure. All right, so once again, the proper way to replace the adhesive is to either buy this pre-cut piece or get a new panel with the adhesive already installed, but I will be taking this phone apart in the very near future, so I'm not going to worry about perfection. By the way, you can find all the parts and tools used in this video down in the video description. And also while you're at it, do remember to subscribe. So this piece that I had removed did have an area here that was not very sticky. I cut that off and just replaced it with some of this black adhesive again. This is temporary because I will be taking this phone again in the near future, but you definitely don't want to put this on and then find out that you have a problem. So after you've fully tested the phone and you peel off the wax backing of the adhesive, the rest is relatively easy. We just want to set this down in place. And if you apply some heat, that does allow it to set better. So once you get the rear panel installed, go ahead and hit it with the heat gun, hair dryer, set it out in the sun for a while if you don't have any other options, and that will help seal everything up on the inside. If you found the video helpful, like it, share it, check out my channel for more tutorials and product reviews, and most of all, remember to hit the subscribe button. Feel free to leave your feedback in the comments section, and thanks for watching.